Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us for North Dakota Today. I'm Lisa Bedell here with Chris Berg on this Monday morning. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Love of good Monday. No, I feel like my brain is still asleep. But uh, I had a nice, such quiet a great weekend. weekend. Yeah, yeah, it was. Well, it, was it was low nice key. And us too. We ended up going, guess we, we went to go see The Lion King. Did you? Yeah. I was wondering. I put something in because we were hearing all the reviews and I, I think. I loved I, it. You loved it? Yeah, I'd heard like mixed reviews on it yeah. and then you go and, you know, it's the exact same story but with all the the real animals and just to kind of be reminded of the story and I, I thought it was fantastic. I, well, I think that's more of a real review because sometimes the reviews are from like snobby, yeah. you know, Oh, you know, they didn't have this theater type. Yeah. So I don't exactly. So it's, I loved Aladdin when I watched that, and then someone was like, they hated it, and I was like, well, why? Like, well, the acting wasn't up to par or something. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I still loved it. So I don't know. And apparently, you were not alone. Uh, Record-breaking debut for The Lion King this oh, weekend. Nice. The studio said that the remake devoured an estimated 185 million in ticket sales. That's incredible. Kind of watching. This is a. Uh, the ninth highest opening of all time. Globally, it's already grossed 531 million. No other studio even dared to go up against The Lion King with a major release. That's probably smart. In its third weekend, uh, Spider-Man Far From Home fell to second place with just 21 million. Toy Story 4, still out, have not seen that one yet either. I'm either. 14.6. So I'm excited now. And usually I always say, like, I am way behind all the time on, you yeah, know, what? This, one. this one's good. Okay. Yeah. As I say, we, I told you a couple weeks ago, I did buy Dumbo for my daughters. And then JB and I watched it last night. So, you know, now we've watched Aladdin, Dumbo. We gotta you're on, you're get, on. Yeah, I, I'm, you know, rolling in the right direction. We have to go see. It's not that. I keep uh, Mulan. They had, they had the preview for Mulan. So the real life Mulan's coming out pretty soon. That looked really good, too. So it's, it's so. going to be fun, was. yeah. So what was your favorite part? And did you like the... I mean, you know, you just, you love the Hakuna Matata part yeah, that's where they what... start singing the Hakuna, Hakuna Matata. Um, but it was really great. And Amish and Tony helped me out, the guy that plays Darth Vader. His, to have his voice back, James Earl Jones, to have his voice back there for Mufasa was fantastic. It just was a nice sit back, grab a you know bucket of popcorn and enjoy the ride. Uh, Jordan continues to any person who has not watched the Beyonce uh, video from her song from Lion King. He's like, sit down one moment. And then we oh. like, he plays it. So even <laughs> this morning, again, we were listening to it and watching it. So that's just like a little taste of just, I'm sure, how amazing the movie is. It's really well done. I mean, to see these animals and, and it just sucks you in. It's sort of like, I, I saw it in our script, but did you remember the first time you saw it? Have you seen Avatar? Mm hmm Okay. Yeah. Remember the first time you saw it? And like, there's that moment in the film, at least for me, where because you're going in their world and then back into the real world. And I was at this huge IMAX theater when I saw it, and I had that thing like, okay, what world am I in right now? Because it was 3D, and it was just, it's kind of the same thing. At first, you're like, you see these animals talking, and you're like, all right. But then after a while, you're like, oh, yeah, of course lions can talk. And that's exactly how they would talk and what they would say. <laughs> and so it's great. I love it. Okay, well, that's a good review. Good Thank review you. from Chris yeah. Berg. Okay, and Chris was talking about this last week, and I had not watched it yet. Are you uh, going to go from, from Lion King to Top Gun? Because I had not watched the uh, new Top Gun uh, trailer is out. You know, I, I unfortunately, I guess I do sometimes hang out in that thing called Twitterverse, right? <laughs> I know I shouldn't because it just becomes this horrific conversation ties. But if we can re-roll that for a second, Tony. Somebody pointed out because, oh my God. But if you're like is... a movie purist and you know every single, yeah. I, I guess that you would notice that. I was like, you told me to look and I'm still like, what? What, I mean, what were we, too, what were we looking for? Like, Wait a second. But anyways, I just think it's funny that people that finance films and direct them pay that much attention, which that's what they're paid to do. But okay, we're going to strip the old jacket. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so we talk a lot about online, well, things have changed from 34 years ago, Top Gun, to the new Top Gun. Uh, kids' goals are getting a little bit different. Remember I told you last week that I wanted to be a pilot, I thought I was going to be yeah. like a Blue Angel, maybe an astronaut when I was a kid. Uh, well, becoming YouTube famous apparently is now more appealing. That's according to a new survey commemorating the 50th anniversary of the historic Apollo 11 moon landing. This uh, new study found that children in the U.S. were three times more likely to be or want to be YouTube stars mm. than astronauts. Only 11% want to become an astronaut compared to 29% who want to be <laughs> social media stars. To inspire the next generation of space explorers, LEGO is partnering with Scholastic to send 50 kids to space camp in 
2020. I feel like you maybe don't hear as I mean, after the 50 year you know, anniversary, there was a lot of buzz, but so five years ago, two years ago, there wasn't really, people that, weren't talking about good. space exploration anymore. Not, yeah, not as prominently as much, obviously, as back then, but also keep in mind, I mean, we've told about this story where there's the little guy who basically opens up presents, not presents, but opens up toys on YouTube and knocks down, like, he knocks down like seven, eight million dollars a year. It's incredible. You know, an astronaut. That's good money. Not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even for Boudou, that, that's, pretty, uh, that's pretty legit money. So I, I know my my 11 year old was just telling me not so long ago that you know she she has several favorite like YouTubers that yes. she follows and loves, and she was like joking that one of her teachers, you know, she was like oh, I don't have a favorite YouTuber, and all the kids were like, oh, like she's horrified and shocked. <laughs> you know, it's like they they do they they love their YouTube, and, and as long as it's you know, some of them are good influencers, you know, yeah, some of them, some are, some of them are. are. We're not yeah. saying like, um, like you should be the next, you know, Kim Kardashian, because when I think social media uh, person, that's, but that's probably too old too. Like, the like kids these days are like, Kim, I, don't know. I think you're in the right vein, though, with Kim or Kylie, of course, uh, who's Kendall. You know, yeah. The younger, Kendall, the gen, sorry, the, the gen billion dollar business. Is no, Kendall? Kendall's the, the model. model. Kylie, Kylie is Kendall the makeup. Yeah. The, she's the billionaire. I mean, I think Kendall's doing all right, too, though. I think yeah. Kim is doing, <laughs> Kim who, <laughs> Kim Kardashian, nobody cares. Kim is just trying to stay relevant, you know, but. So can we show something, did you go to the Fargo Street Fair? Yes. You did? Yeah. So Gabby, <laughs> can we get your help with something? Can we get a close-up of this and see if uh, Lisa actually bumped into this gentleman? Okay. Did so, you see this? Hey, unfortunately it was they, again on Twitter, but <laughs> did you happen to see oh, this guy? no, I Do didn't. Do you know who this is? I did not see that guy. It's Nick Offerman from Parks and Recs. Or, yeah, he's Ron Swanson, you know. But So he was down at the Fargo Street Fair. Have you seen the show Parks and Recs? Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not, I don't watch a lot of it. I don't I'm... either. But he's big. I mean, he's, you know, big in Parks and Recs, right on Mission Tony. And uh, so it was pretty cool. He was down in the, the Fargo Street Fair, kind of trolling Fargo. Making Were you down comments. there? Did you? Oh, I didn't so go. you didn't I take that picture? To, no, I just saw it spreading around. And I was like, oh, that's kind of fun that he was in Fargo. And... Hanging out, so I, I almost went down after I saw it, but everyone started hitting him up and on Twitter, like, "Hey, swing on by. There's free beers here and stuff like that." I yeah, I went Friday afternoon. I went home, took a little nap, and then I, I went and walked around, bought a few things, and Did uh, you? yeah, I love it. I thought it was bigger than other years. It went all the way like, I mean, the side streets, but all the way like north of St. Mary's Cathedral. Like it was there was and that whole like. I know you don't have to drink because I know my parents went and they're like, we just had lemonade. Why would you drink beer? It was so nice. But I had, and I can't remember, and I, I'm sorry because it's one of the local breweries had a watermelon wheat. Ooh. And they had a huge slice of watermelon that like, chuck, like splashed uh, the beer. And I was like, it was the most ref refreshing, yeah. delicious drink I have like ever had. I, I really liked it. Well done. That's like so, perfect for the summer. Yeah. So I thought it, it was great. It, was, it wasn't too hot. And uh, I didn't spend too much money, so <laughs> just a little bit. You know, I don't know. You, you didn't make it, though? No, we ended up just uh, doing family time and then going to the movie and things like that, so we didn't go down to the street fair. But uh, we've been down before, and it's it's a great time. And obviously, with my man Nick Offerman there, I wish I would have been down there hanging out with him. I did have my daughter with me. Marley ate the watermelon, and I drank the beer. So <laughs> okay. most of the stuff I bought was for my girls. In fact, little pouches. We bought some American Girl doll clothes. Uh, it was all... Because it's very kid friendly. Have even you though. bought any back to school stuff yet? Oh, a little bit. Uh, a little bit. I know the clothes. Wow. It's getting there. I'm impressed. I walked into Walmart yesterday and there was like pads of paper and stuff, and I almost like broke out in highs. I was like, that is just. It is just way too early to be talking about back to school. My girls want to go and start that. And I was going to say, we did buy a pencil pouch that Marley said she swore she would bring to middle <laughs> school. So that was purchased at the street fair. But uh, no, we've just bought some clothes that I said, well, this is this is back to school, part of our back to school. But I that's, think it's better to spread it out because otherwise you just do one weekend and it's that's like... That's true. Especially for the clothes and stuff, I get it. Hurts the pocketbook. Okay, well, we're not going to talk about back to school just yet. We have a great show planned. And one of the things we're talking about next, we're still talking about barbecuing. And Good. we're going to be talking about not letting those summer side dishes go stagnant. So some fun new options for your summer barbecues. That's next. Stay with us.